Hello and welcome to another episode of Anomalies. This is a show about the twists and turns that life takes off of our daily existence, sometimes very mysterious twists and turns. Uh, I'm Dan Hall, one of your hosts, and with me tonight is Dave Jenks, who has been a friend for many years, muchos años, (laughs) and uh, Dave and I have been doing this program for 15 years. Dave, what's happening with you? Are you ready for another episode? I am ready. We have a special guest who's not really a guest, but right. in this case, she is. And I'm looking forward to the presentation that Gwen Farrell has brought us this evening, and uh, she will do a good job on it. We all know. And one of the things <clears throat> that Gwen and Dave and I talked about is that yeah, you know we do know certain things. We have our own area of expertise, so we thought instead of trying to cajole somebody from to come in as a guest, why don't we let our that expertise come through? So tonight, Gwen is going to be doing our show, and she'll um, she'll talk to us about some things that are particular to her background. I'll be doing a show, and then Dave will be doing a show. So you'll get to see all three of us. So Gwen, I'm going to let's introduce you a little bit. That's probably the most appropriate thing to do. So Gwen has been active in MUFON. I think you started out as a field investigator, didn't you? Any moon yes. ago? Mm-hmm. And then you were involved in MUFON's uh, experiences resources team. Uh, you're involved in a program that I'm involved in, OPUS, Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support. You've had a ton of ex- uh, work with experiencers. Um, you uh, didn't you edit the MUFON journal at one point in time? Um, I didn't edit, but I was um, I was liaison between the Experience Resource Team, MUFON Resource Team, and the MUFON Journal. Okay, that's where I picked up the MUFON Journal. And you're yeah. a, a certified hypnotherapist that has that's worked right. with many many clients. Mm-hmm. So welcome to the show that you host sometimes. What are you going to talk to us about tonight? I I know we have a little little PowerPoint presentation, but hopefully if I can do the right things technologically, Mm -hmm. we we can watch. But what did you, what do you want to share with us tonight? And maybe more importantly, why? Um, Well, tonight I have brought a presentation that I'm going to show um, about hybrids, human alien hybrids and hybridizing methods. And the reason that I thought that it was pertinent on this show is because I know a lot of our viewers are interested in that subject. Many, many people in the UFO field and experiencer field are interested in the hybridization programs. And I, the re, some of the research that I have done has brought forward some more information about uh, hybridizing programs that are not as well known as others. And I will be doing those possibly in a book at some point in the future, but I've done it for my uh, groups, talked to my groups, and I thought that that might be something that would um, would be interesting for people to hear here. So tonight we're going to talk about hybrids and hybridizing methods. And I forgot to mention, you are a published author. You wrote a book that I have called Forbidden Questions. So just to add something to that. So let's see if I know how to work the uh, technology here. Thank you. One of the most fascinating and important aspects of the human alien contact phenomenon is human alien hybrids. How they are made, why they are made, and who they are. This is what we're gonna talk about today. The information in this presentation comes from my own research and the many experiencers I have worked with over the years who believe they are part human and part alien. In other words, human alien hybrids. Now this is a controversial subject because science and even some experiencers don't accept the existence of human alien hybrids. 
Admittedly, there are some good arguments against the reality of hybrids, and I have no scientific evidence to prove they're real. But after all the years in this field, I am convinced that there is a real phenomenon behind the experiences that we call human-alien hybrids. And that's the basis for the presentation today. If it's different from your own experience or knowledge, that doesn't mean either of us is wrong, just different. Simply put, a biological hybrid is the offspring of two plants or animals of different varieties or species. Hybrids are created on Earth naturally and by humans and can be powerful evolutionary forces over generations. In plants, a hybrid is produced by using the pollen of one plant to pollinate the flower of a different variety of plant. And in animals, it's much the same. Legends and myths of otherworldly beings breeding with humans have been handed down from ancient times, and descriptions of such interactions can be found in the sagas and writings of cultures all around the world. Over time, they have been called gods, angels, demons, and many other names. But today, they are likely to be called aliens or ETs. Who were these mysterious beings, and what motivated them to mix their DNA with ours? It is possible that human DNA was manipulated by alien visitors sometime in the ancient past, and that DNA has passed down through time. If that's true, then all of us may be aliens. Human-alien crossbreeding in the ancient past and in modern times is vehemently denied by mainstream science and religion, but it has never been disproved. Motives from ancient times to modern times may have changed, but many people believe the children of aliens and humans are still being created and, in fact, are living on the Earth today. Reportedly, there are many different ET races or groups involved in producing human-alien hybrids, each for their own reasons. Many hybrids work, go to school, and successfully participate in Earth society. At the same time, some hybrids seem to be created for jobs or activities off-world and are not physically capable of surviving on Earth. Experiencers sometimes report seeing and interacting with them on ships or in other locations. It has been estimated that up to 30% of the human population may be hybrids, but most are not aware of it. So how do human-alien hybrids happen? According to the increasing number of hybrid individuals who are coming forward to tell their stories, different methods and procedures are used to create human-alien hybrids, and both physical and soul consciousness techniques are used. Today, we're going to look at the two most commonly reported methods, although there may be others that are lesser known. The physical genetic material method, and the soul consciousness sharing method. These methods are quite different, as we will see. The physical genetic material method is probably the most commonly known and reported method, and many people believe this has been their experience. This method involves abductions of human males and females, an extraction of sperm and ova, which is mixed with alien genetic material, and the immature hybrid beings that result are incubated on board craft, or possibly in other alien locations. 
In some procedures, human abductees report having sexual intercourse, either willingly or unwillingly, with alien beings on ships, and the resulting hybrid fetuses are incubated aboard the craft. In some procedures, human males and females willingly donate sperm and ova to be used in alien hybridizing programs. Some procedures involve premature hybrid fetuses that are implanted into the wombs of human women instead of incubators or containers. And at some point, the women are returned to the ships where the immature fetuses are removed. Some women and men report being abducted and presented with hybrid children as their own and instructed to interact with them. Most hybridizing programs of this type are reportedly being done by various species of gray aliens, but Nordics are frequently seen with grays. So it appears that they may work or at least travel together, and they also may be involved in hybridizing programs. In this type of hybridizing method, it may be possible for one human hybrid to contain more than one type of alien genetic material, along with their own natural human genetics, in which case they will have traits of all the races involved. In addition, breeding programs run by humans or jointly with aliens may function in hidden facilities on Earth. These hybrids are sometimes seen in public places, but most of them stay out of sight and keep a low profile or live in closed communities in remote locations around the world. In their book, Rachel's Eyes, the Strange But True Case of a Human-Alien Hybrid. Helen Luttrell and Jean, Jill, Jean Bilodeau tell the story of a human-alien hybrid who was allowed to leave a secret Earth facility and live as a normal human for a short time. Although she was able to function fairly well, after about a year, she was returned to the facility. Human gene editing techniques such as CRISPR and PASTE exist today and involve alteration of the genetic material of a living organism by inserting, replacing, or deleting a DNA sequence. Now, this is typically done with the aim of improving some characteristic of a, a crop or a farm animal or correcting genetic disorders in humans. But alien, perhaps alien races, have used their own technology in the past and continue to do so now. The second hybridizing program reported is the soul consciousness sharing method. This method is not as commonly reported as the physical genetic method that I just described, but it does seem to be happening more frequently and many hybrids believe they were never abducted or subjected to any kind of a physical method, but instead a method that involved their spirit and consciousness was used. Reportedly, the soul consciousness sharing method can only be done by high vibration or high frequency alien beings, because they are the only races who have the ability to join their own consciousness with a human soul or spirit to create a new conscious being. Low frequency abductor races such as some greys and possibly Nordics and others cannot use this method. In the soul consciousness sharing method, human abduction is not allowed and it does not happen. Apparently, high-frequency and high-consciousness alien beings do not abduct humans. In this method, no genetic material is taken, given, or transferred. And even though it involves human souls, this method requires the permission of the spirit realm or the soul realm and all the parties involved. And souls are not manipulated or stolen.
The races who do use this method seem to have an understanding of universal consciousness and are able to communicate with humans and the human soul realm, which is required to do this type of hybridizing program. In this method, before a human hybrid can be created, the alien race must get the permission of the human soul realm and the prospective human parents who will be contacted through dreams. If they all agree, the human parents will create the physical body, sperm from the father and ova from the mother. The spirit realm will contribute a spirit or a soul to the body. And the aliens will contribute part of their consciousness. Together, a new human will be created, a new conscious being, who will eventually be born naturally from the human mother. There is no incubation aboard ships. And if all parties do not agree, the hybrid will not be created. Most hybrids report making pre-life agreements with alien races that guide them in their early incarnations and set out how they relate to their human and star families. But not all experiencers believe they have made this type of agreement. I'm not going to talk about star seeds today, but the soul consciousness method of hybridization is similar to typical descriptions of how star seeds happen. So there may be some crossover or at least some similarities there. So what are characteristics of human alien hybrids? Human alien hybrids created using either of these methods that we just talked about will exhibit traits of both humans and aliens including their own human traits that express in different ways. Alien traits tend to be passive, while human traits are active, which is likely why so many modern human-alien hybrids look and behave like ordinary human beings and may not even know for certain that they are hybrids. At the same time, Human-alien hybrids typically have physiological, anatomic, and mental traits that differ from their members of their human family. In addition to other things, there may be a blood type that cannot be explained by human genetics. Their normal body temperature and blood pressure may be lower than standard. They may suffer from rare physical conditions or syndromes, and they may have ability to do uh, mental or psychic. They may also possess the ability to do energy healing on their own bodies and on others, in person and at a distance. Human alien hybrids are distinct individuals, but there are certain things they report in common, such as growing up in unusual home and family situations and feeling like they never fit in with their family or social circle. They may feel a strong connection to space or among something among the stars. And they may have recurring lucid dreams in which they see themselves in alien bodies or locations. And they may also experience repeated contact of various types with otherworldly beings throughout their lives. Hybrids report that they have missions on Earth with a specific task or purpose. The way they carry out those missions will be determined by the alien group they're related to, the mission itself, and other considerations. And there can be a great deal of variation from hybrid to hybrid. Hybrids nearly always report being born with pre-programmed knowledge, abilities, and gifts that guide their mission, enable them to accomplish their task, and make their adjustment to life on Earth easier. 
although in many cases they may not understand who they are and what's going on until they are adults. In general, hybrids are usually have a more positive and less fearful attitude and are able to accept the difficulties and do not exhibit the problems that many 100% human experiencers report. Many hybrids have a deep knowing that they are different, but it may have taken them a long time to understand who they were. Of course, none of these characteristics is solid proof that someone is a human alien hybrid, but taken together, they may be strong indicators. So why create human alien hybrids? Although formal UFO and paranormal research has not devoted much time and effort to the human alien hybrid question, some studies have been done and individuals who believe they are hybrids have come forward to tell their stories and share their beliefs about why the creation of hybrids is continuing and why hybrid humans are becoming more active among normal humans at this time. There are several different theories. One theory is that alien races are creating humans who are more likely to survive drastic earth changes, such as global warming, rises in ocean levels, and extreme weather and geological changes like we are beginning to see today. Another theory is that some alien races can no longer successfully procreate on their home worlds, so they come to Earth to use humans as physical shells or incubators, or human physical or genetic material to make their own bodies healthy and fertile. Another theory is that aliens are creating hybrid beings that will somehow help them to eventually take over the Earth. Another theory is that they are hybrids are being made to create custom designed beings for specific tasks or as test subjects for studies and experiments. Much like we crossbreed plants and animals on earth for specific purposes, the different hybridizing alien races may be doing the same. Hybrid humans may be created to gain a better understanding of life on Earth and to report information back to their star families. And a final theory is that aliens are creating liminal beings as to serve as transitions of humanity to higher or more advanced states of consciousness. I'm going to share with you the testimony of an experiencer who believes he is a hybrid created to be this kind of transition for humanity. The first time I was taken by ETs, I was told that I'm actually a human alien hybrid created as part of a program to mix ET and human DNA to upgrade humanity to eventually be more advanced mentally and spiritually. I'm not the final version, but a step along the path, so to speak. There are too many people on the earth for ETs to change everyone. But some groups of humans with certain characteristics are having their DNA mixed with aliens and will reproduce. And over time, humanity will reach where it needs to be. It's obvious that humans can benefit from some upgrading, and I'm happy to know that I'm part of it. TR. So the next important question is, how do I know if I am a human alien hybrid? Unfortunately, there's no current scientific method of answering that question. But if you believe you may be, there are some things that may help you decide. 
probably the most common question is, if I have alien genetic material in my body, wouldn't genesting, genetic testing reveal it? Well, unfortunately, the answer is that current geneticists, doctors, and researchers cannot detect alien DNA in a human genome because no one has a sample of alien DNA or knows what alien DNA looks like to compare it to, at least not publicly. There may be samples of alien gen genetic material somewhere on the earth that could be used today, but it's not publicly available. So Ancestry.com or 23andMe are not going to be able to tell you if you're a hybrid. Current genetic testing may indicate if a human genome contains something unusual, but unless there's something to compare it to, there is no way of knowing what it is. You can try genetic testing, but what we currently have available is unlikely to answer your question. The good news is there are some things that you can do on your own that may help you determine if you're a hybrid. So first of all, you can ask yourself a question. What makes me think I am a hybrid? One thing you can look at are the hybrid characteristics that we talked about today. Although the presence of those characteristics does not indicate with certainty that you are a hybrid, if all or nearly all of them are present, there's a strong likelihood that you may be. Many people have a deep inner knowing about themselves and their world. If you have a deep feeling or a conviction that you are a human alien hybrid, pay attention to it and be open to it. Don't just discount it out of hand. You may have a history of hybrids in your family, and exploring that history can reveal more information for you. And even though the details may not be clear, you may know from your own contact experiences that you are not a normal 100% human being. You can also ask yourself, if you have any unusual physical or mental abilities or gifts that differ from your human family. Another question that you might ask yourself is, how do other people react to me or what do they think of me? Do family members, friends, or business associates tell you they think you're different or special? Do you not fit in with family or social groups? Another question is, do I have a positive motivating mission that informs my life? And does it differ from the things that motivate my human friends and family members? As I said earlier, all human hybrids and even some non-hybrid experiencers speak of coming to the earth with a mission that guides their life. If you feel strongly that you do have a mission, it will be more than just something that you like doing or you're interested in. Once discovered, it will have a strong influence on you. If you do have such a mission that you're aware of, follow it as best you can as long as it doesn't endanger your physical, mental, or your spiritual health. If it does, it is not your mission. But the more you do it, the more clearly you will understand how and why you have it, or if it really is a true hybrid mission. But always remember to keep an open mind and be patient with yourself. There is a lot to learn. And the last but very important question is, what if you are a hybrid, but you don't want to be? 
Now, there is currently no way to completely change or no known way to completely change human genetic structure in a lifetime. Although some experiencers report that some changes have been made to them by aliens, although they don't really seem to know how. But there are some options that you can look at and think about. If you think you are a hybrid and you don't want to be, the first thing you should do is seek medical help or therapy to help you better understand your hybrid characteristics and integrate being a hybrid into the rest of your life. There may be nothing you can do about it physically, but being a hybrid is not all you are. You know, we all have to find positive ways to accept and cope with aspects of ourselves and our lives that we don't like. And sometimes we do need help to do that. A therapist may be able to help you understand your situation better and learn how to deal with it. You may also be able to recover memories with the help of a therapist. But if you're suffering serious physical or mental issues, you should consult a medical or mental health professional to make sure there isn't something else going on. It may be possible to change or cancel a pre-life agreement. Now we talked about pre-life agreements earlier and how all hybrids come into a human life with an agreement that usually lasts their whole life. But some experiencers have said it is possible to change or even cancel a pre-life agreement that you made. I have spoken with experiencers who said they were able to do that. One experiencer said he reached out to his star family through his mind and heart and said, I honor my relationship with you and the agreement we made, but it is no longer the path I want and I want to change with gratitude. Then he felt a sense of relief and positivity and he moved on with his life. It may be worth a try. Last, if you are fortunate enough to have understanding friends or family that you can share with, take advantage of them. Again, they probably won't be able to change your genetic structure, but having their support can, uh, can make being a human-alien hybrid something you can live with and maybe even learn to appreciate. Also, support groups may be helpful as long as they are positive and make you feel better and less fearful. The human alien hybrid subject is huge. And if you want to read about it, there are many books on the subject that are available, some better than others. I've included three here that I want to recommend. The first one is Meet the Hybrids, The Lives and Missions of ET Ambassadors on the Earth by Miguel Mendoza and Barbara Lamb. The second is the classic David Jacobs book, Walking Among Us, The Alien Plan to Control Humanity. And the book that I mentioned earlier, Rachel's Eyes by Helen Littrell and Jean Bilodeau. These books are very different from each other with varying descriptions of human alien hybrids and hybridizing methods. But this is a very complicated phenomenon. And if you want to understand all the different aspects and interpretations, I think these books give a good overall view. In closing, there isn't much that's certain about the human alien hybrid experience. But if you are a hybrid or you think you might be, there is one thing that you can be certain of. You are not alone. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm kind of hung up on the uh, 
situation where you think you're a hybrid, but how do you prove that? So uh, my first reaction was going to be go to Ancestry.com, but you pointed out that there's no way to, to prove that. I mean, it seems like if you went to some other resource, like a therapist, unless you get somebody who's on the opus approved therapy list, they're going to say that you're guilty of fanciful thinking and want to put you on some kind of psychotropic medication. So what, what what's the what's the answer to that, Gwen? How, how, if you suspect something, well, how do you know? How do you know? Well, you can use the things that we suggested here, um, but I know what you mean. It's hard to find a therapist that you can talk to about this. But, you know, um, I always say that choosing the right therapist is not like going to the store and choosing an avocado. You know, you don't just pull something off the shelf. In order to get a good relationship with a the therapist, you have to meet them, you have to screen them, you have to talk to them, and you just have to ask them, what do you believe? I think maybe I'm a hybrid. What do you think about that? And if they go like, oh, no, 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 I think you need to go to a doctor. Well, then you're just going to move to someone else. It may take you a little time. You can try reaching out to MUFON. You can try reaching out to OPUS because we will have the resources that can point you in those directions. Yeah. But you really may just need to try and see if you can find someone um, who's going to be able to help you with that. But that's a great question. I'll, I'll just jump in here. There's um, something called junk DNA, which is not a scientific term, I don't think, but it's well, maybe it is what the scientists use, geneticists use. I don't know if they all agree that it's there is such a thing, but what I've, I've read a number of sources talking about this so-called junk DNA as potential... Mm -hmm leftovers from something um, or just mysterious unknown material in in the human genome or genes. And do you know anything about that so-called junk DNA and how it might relate to what you're talking about, Gwen? Um, well, I, I know the term junk, junk DNA. Um, and I do understand basically what it is, I guess, like most people do. I do understand being in this field that there are many people that think that maybe it's not junk. I don't think it's junk. I just don't think we know what it's there for. Um, mm. And it could be that it is some DNA that was tampered with um, at some point in the ancient past. And for some reason, it's just still in there. Um, maybe it's it's trigger. It, maybe it's supposed to trigger at a certain time, or it's supposed to. I I really don't know. I can't explain it better than anybody else can. But I do know that I do understand that term. Yeah, and I do know that at this point in time, uh, when I'm giving this presentation, there's no. You know, it's not going to help you with getting finding out if you're a hybrid or not. Yeah, you brought up an interesting uh, jog to uh, my memory. Um, long time ago, some 30 years ago, I think, when I first started looking into a lot of this stuff, I read a book uh, by Barbara Marciniak, I believe. Oh, Barbara Marciniak, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Bringers of the Dawn. Oh, yeah, good one. <laughs> and um, she talked a lot about, I think, this so-called junk DNA and how it, it, it was, like you said, ready, you know, waiting to be activated. There's a lot of what might be termed airy fairy, new agey type stuff in her book, yeah. but it did really stick with me a lot in that um, the the possibility she brought up uh, with regard to the hybridization, this alleged hybridization program or programs going on, and the idea that aliens um, have tinkered with our DNA over millennia, and she brought up a lot of real interesting. Um, you know, concepts relating to this field, most of it was very positive. You know, she said, with the bringers of the dawn, we were bringing, the aliens were going to bring the light, we were going to be illuminated, we were going to evolve, be upgraded, so to speak. But there are, um, as you also pointed out, there are many different camps here 
David Jacobs, you mentioned. I know Stephen Greer believes that there's no such thing as an alien abduction. He says it's all my labs, you know, military mm -hmm. abduction, staged abduction. I don't know quite where I stand and all that. I tend to agree with Greer on a lot of stuff just because we, if there's anything we know here in this whole mess, it's that uh, military operations are present. They're very motivated. Money is a very motivating factor, obviously. Um, and keeping knowledge secret, even if some of the stuff is true about aliens, the military and industrial complex will want to keep it secret. And they have trillions of dollars to to uh, you know, com to complete that their mission, <laughs> keeping things secret, keeping us in the dark. So I tend to think there's a lot of messing with us, a lot of illusion, you know, um, smoke and mirrors. But it's very hard to deny that there are probably aliens, um, whether they're ET, inter interdimensional, whatever. They they are tinkering with us and have tinkered with us. So. When we talk about upgrades versus, say, uh, humanity being just a, a herd of cattle, <laughs> um, that to me is the, you know, the $64 million question is that are we fooling ourselves when we think that we're being included in this, uh, you know, this cosmic upgrade, or are we essentially pets of a higher <laughs> evolved um civilization or beings somewhere what what do you think about that gwen where do you fall along that spectrum of we're livestock versus we're about to join the galactic community well i wouldn't say that we are about to join the galactic community because i think it's further away for us than that although um i i believe that it's possible for people to accomplish a lot spiritually and mentally if you work towards that, you do meditation, you study, you, you know, maybe do yoga, tai chi, things like that, that that's bring you into your center to do that. So maybe it is possible. Um, I, I am inclined not to believe that we're just cattle that we're used, um, you know, being shoved around and um, that we're a blight on the earth. And uh, we're just here because they don't, nobody can figure out what else to do with us. There yeah. are many, those are theories that people, a lot of people come up with. So yeah. I'm not really sure about that. Um, but I do believe that we are learning and I believe it's possible for us to evolve, even though it, it's a, you know, it happens at a galactic pace, if you want to say that, or geographic, geographic pace, geologic pace. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes mm -hmm. a long, long, long time for us to really evolve. But I think we are. And so perhaps that's what TR, uh, my client, was talking about. Or, um, you know, I personally can't tell you that, except that I do feel like we're, we are upgrading and we're, some of us are doing it ourselves. Some of us are doing it through religion. Some of, some of us are doing it through, like I said, Tai Chi, physical things, yoga, things like that. I believe those, all those kinds of body, 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 mind, spirit things can also help to raise us to a, a certain level, a better, higher level. So I don't know if that answers your questions or not, uh, or not, but that's kind of what I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very complex, obviously. Um, and we don't know so much about our past. And I know Dan just last week, I think, um, had a discussion with with um, a, a guest about um, aliens in the Bible or the possibility that Jesus or some of our past uh, luminaries or leaders or gods even were E.T. or were somehow related to E.T. or descendants of or whatever. I'm wondering if Dan will jump in here and talk about what he learned uh you know, from that guest in terms of the whole hybridization issue. Well, I don't know that Michael, well, Gwen was part of that too, so. Uh, oh, I wasn't, Michael, okay, Gwen jumped in. Yeah, I missed it, unfortunately, but so you both talked about that. Can you both that, into that? Michael Carter was the guest you were referring to, and I don't know that he, uh, and Gwen certainly you want to hear what she has to think. I don't know that Michael Carter convince me that his view of uh, religion, which mixes in ufology and religion, is necessarily 
the correct view, but it sure as hell is an interesting view. Uh, so I don't, I guess I don't know what else I would say other than that. Gwen, do you have a different perspective on what Reverend Carter said? Um, we didn't really discuss hybrids. I think he might have mentioned the term once in a specific uh, in a, a specific context, but we didn't really talk about hybrids. Um, we didn't get into that with him, so I don't I don't really know what he thinks. Um, well, in so, terms of in, so. intervention, I mean, intervention from he was specifically talking about Christianity, yes. right? I mean, the Bible. I have a great book. I can't remember. The name I've got a lot of books in my library. I can't remember the title, unfortunately. Very obscure book, but it it makes the case, and I have to admit, it's a really good case that Jesus was an alien. You know, to put it in a one sentence summary, it was much more complicated than that. Um, but the idea that certain, like I said, gurus, leaders, spiritual leaders of the past, including Jesus and um, Buddha, maybe, and anyone else that was a real person or a fictitious person, or it's not clear what they were, uh, the idea that they came as essentially as a god and were tinkerers or leaders, uh, you know, in the, the spiritual evolution of humanity, that's always fascinated me. And I think, Gwen, you said that there, there are estimates that 30% of humans may be hybrids. I mean, yeah, I have I have seen from. that. Mm -hmm. I've seen yeah. that, which which I think is I don't know if I would accept that, um, but that is a, a a a percentage that floats around out there in this field. So that's the reason I put it in because I've heard it um, more than once. That's so. a lot of a, a lot of tinkering, isn't it? I mean, when when I look at humans and how we're constructed, so to speak. A lot of times I think that our makers, our programmers, if they exist, they kind of they kind of cut quarters, corners in a lot of places, to be honest, because I played, you know, played a lot of sports over the years. And I learned what where the deficiencies are in our physical bodies, our knees, for one thing, we're not made to do as much as we do with them. You know, the, the amount of disease that we are susceptible to uh, our limited lifespan. I mean, it's very rare to live a century. Um, it's almost like there was some built-in obsolescence, which was a term of the 70s and 80s, you know, when manufacturers started making dishwashers that broke on purpose so you'd buy a new one. Well, now it seems like everything that's manufactured lasts about three years, you got to buy a new one. I wonder if the, the makers had some built-in obsolescence in other words they they were happy with a lifespan of 76 years or whatever um why do you think that would be if you're creating beans if you're al altering them why not just have them last 100 years or 200 or 500 or be invincible i think that's a great question um i don't know um and even if you ask biblical scholars why did um the uh, leader, you know, the oh, people who lived in biblical times lived to 200, 100, 200, 300, 400 years. Um, and why don't we now? And I don't, I don't know that anybody really has an answer to that question either. So I don't know. As far as obsolescence, built in obsolescence, you know, I think we live in a physical universe. We live in a physical reality and we have physical bodies and our bodies can only handle so much of this reality that we are in then body's gonna it's gonna go um and as long as we're limited by this physical form or physical uh, container that we have then we're always going to be limited spiritually but if you believe that we have a soul or spirit that moves past this body when it finally craps out then that is our that's our way to then i guess continue moving i think that's what religion teaches and many of the philosophies teach and um so i guess that's that's what i think about it i don't have any that's solid true. answers either if, if you have a soul that persists then the body is kind of secondary and that's what we're taught you know by spiritual leaders it's just a vessel uh, but my my final question here for uh, gwen is 
the idea of having a, like I said, a vessel in which the soul resides for at least some period of time. What have you learned from talking with experiencers about the soul as a, you know, a very special thing that may not be um, attainable by everyone or anyone in the universe? Are there potentially races who are not capable of retaining a soul or acquiring a soul? And would that make humans special in some way, you know, realizing that we don't want to view ourselves in a way that we aren't yeah. actually, but, but you really have to look at the soul, you know, when it gets, comes down to it, where do, where do you think the soul comes into play with this hybridization stuff? Well, it depends on which, what we're talking about today is just methods, methodologies for hybridizing. And um, on the physical methodology, if you believe that people are abducted and the sperm and ova is taken and uh, that whole physical process is done, then there's not even a question at all about if the soul is involved. Um, I would, I would uh, submit that probably many people who, um, who uh, support that theory of hybridizing and have, have experienced it and believe they have, probably believe they have a soul. But the soul is never talked about in that, in that uh, context with that type of hybridizing technique. So I would say um, it looks like you can become a hybrid without having your soul tinkered with at all. Um, the other method, which is the soul consciousness sharing, um, is supposedly not just a different way of looking at it, it's actually a different method. So we're talking about two different methods for creating a hybrid hybrid um, beings. And with that one, the soul is not really tinkered with or manipulated at all, but the soul realm or the spirit realm is involved. For human beings, the spirit, we are taught that the spirit realm is the highest level that we can ever achieve. And that of course all is involved in consciousness because it's all about consciousness. But the soul realm has is in charge of what happens in the, in our lives in our in our regular you know lifetimes that we live, and so the soul realm makes sure that the soul is used properly, and it's not stolen. Um, this sort of thing, and and if you look at the walk-in um, phenomenon, which I've talked about a bit before, that involves some, some of that involves, well, it all involves soul. It's a soul switch switching and the soul or spirit realm is involved in that too. So there's a, there are human beings and there's a spirit realm that really controls our spirits. So I think that, um, uh, um, I don't think there's a solid answer either way to this. I think that it is possible that something happens to some human beings that seems like hybridization. I mean, they're just convinced that they are not 100% human and they have all of these other signs, which I've, the, way, the only way I know all of those characteristics that I gave in the program is because those people have told me. There's no scientist that has gone through and tested these people and said, okay, these are all the characteristics that we find. And these are the things that people report. So there is something a phenomenon that is going on that we have decided to use the term hybrids and hybridization. Well, Dan, you, you surely have some questions here for Gwen, so. Well, I do, but I think they would take us in kind of a bizarre route here. So uh, maybe I would just say thank you to Gwen uh, for her time and effort and it's given me a lot to think about, including some weird things that I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to share now. But thanks, Gwen, very much for taking sure. the time to uh, to raise these questions. Sure. It was a pleasure. Well, thank you, Gwen. Very thorough presentation. We appreciate it. Give us a lot to think about, of course. I think you're going to uh, announce our next yeah, or upcoming guests. We're we're going to get better at doing that. We haven't done that as much in our prior shows, but let's let's talk about who's coming oh, up next. We've got okay. a good lineup. All right, that's great. So I will put my co-host hat back on, <laughs> and uh, let's uh, see who we have coming up. We've got some really interesting shows coming up. So uh, hopefully, our our uh, viewers who've made it this far will uh, take notes 
and come back and see our shows. So, all right, I'm looking at my schedule right here. Okay, so on November 28th, we will be talking to J.K. Scott, who is a well-known science fiction author. And she's going to talk to us about how to write a science fiction novel. So if you've ever thought about doing something like that on paper, she's going to be here to give us a little class and what's involved in writing a sci-fi novel. Then on December the 4th, our guest is going to be Trey Hudson. Um, he's going to talk to us about his book, The Meadow Project, The Exploration into the South's Skinwalker Ranch. So investigation that he's done in a part of the country, the southern part of the United States, that he says is a lot like Skinwalker Ranch. A lot of weird stuff going on. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, later on that week, on December 8th, we're going to have with us Mark Oley, who is the author of the book called Europe's Roswell, 40 Years Since Impact. And so he's going to have a lot of information that hasn't been shared before about this very important um, impact situation that happened in, uh, in Europe. Then on December the 15th, our very own Daniel Hall is going to be talking to us about a really interesting topic and a very important one, the Silver Bridge disaster and um, the possible involvement of a Mothman being in that disaster. So that's really going to be interesting. So I hope everybody can catch these and um, that's that'll that's be good. A pretty good. Pretty good lineup for the next month or so. Yes. I mean, it's a great and, lineup. And, and let me throw in there, please subscribe to our channel if you're listening to this uh, podcast and you like what you've heard from Gwen, Dave, or I. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. Okay. We do. Thank right, you. Folks? We'll, we'll see Everybody? you all next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Have great holidays. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.